You may or may not have seen the video of that laptop there, but if you haven't, it's a Toshiba Satellite M70. There is a video about it, and if you want to watch it, there's a link to it in the video description. But uh, the only really thing that I remarked about this is that the color was the only thing I cared about. The rest of it is not really all that interesting. It's just a Celeron with DDR, IDE hard drive, nothing particularly special. Not all that cool. You want to see something really cool? Well, I guess it depends who you ask whether this qualifies as really cool or not. Well, it's another Toshiba. It's also very bright blue. It's not the same. Uh, it's not teal. It's actual blue. Uh, I don't know if you could get these in customizable colors or not. I don't think so. Given that all the promotional material I've seen for the Toshiba Satellite A40, which is what this is, shows it in blue, I'm pretty sure that either this was the standard and nobody ever customized it, or it was not customizable. But just looking at it, it's pretty benign. It's got Ethernet to USB. That's, is that S-Video? Yeah, that's S-Video. I thought it was PS2, but no, it's S-Video. There's a blank for something. I don't know what would have been there. At least I think it's a blank. It's not like a door or anything. I'm not sure what would have been there. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if maybe this had some video capture ability or television tuner ability or something similar. There's a PCMCIA card slot there. Of course, everything had that. Take a look at the front. I don't think there's much. Just the indicator lights for all your usual things. Power, AC, battery, and the drive. Looks like there's a door there. We'll get to that in a second. This side, we have the analog volume wheel. Very nice thing that Toshiba had for a long time. I don't know if they still have it, but they had it at least through to the early 2010s. Of course, headphone microphone. There's your wireless switch, which is on. It's got a DVD-ROM CD RW. I can upgrade that. I think somewhere around here, out of the uh, that Dell that I picked up, I think I have the DVD burner for that. So we'll see if we can upgrade that. Or, I think that has a DVD burner in it, and I can take the DVD burner out of that. And of course, there's your modem on the back, have the power supply connection, two more USB ports, a whole bunch of vents, which we'll get into, VGA, and Parallel. Now, those of you who have looked up the Toshiba Satellite A40 will already know pretty much everything that I'm about to tell you. There's the MAC addresses, there's the system information. See, P24-15X-512-40 RWDV T W L G C. So I don't know what all that means, but I can tell you it's P2.4, Pentium 4 2.4. 15, I guess that's 15 speed optical drive? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know what the 15X means. But 512, 512 megs of RAM. 40, 40 gigabyte hard drive, RWDV, I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm guessing it means CD burner and DVD-ROM, WLG probably refers to the wireless, I don't know what the T is, and I don't know what the C is, you can see it's A40, DC 15 volts at 8 amps, and that was the big issue with this, because it did not come with a power supply, and you can see that it's not standard, so I had to go and buy a power supply, which was not necessarily cheap. I think it cost me about $30. The generic aftermarket ones were, funny enough, even more expensive than the genuine ones on eBay. So I actually got myself a genuine power adapter. As you can see here, there's the bottle of that if you find yourself in a position to require one of these. So this is what you're looking for. I'd imagine these are pretty fragile too, just because by virtue of it having those tiny pins in it. Oh, that's the parallel port. So you probably want to be careful with that. Here it is opened up. The silver. It's in really good shape. You can see there's very little wear on the keyboard. 
Mostly just the space bar, really, and the A key for some reason. Titanium speakers, surround sound. Anyway, what makes this thing so special is that P4 2.4 gig CPU. Because this machine is from the early to mid 2000s, I don't know exactly when, I guess there'll be a title overlay if I do figure it out, but uh, back then, they didn't have a mobile Pentium 4, and the regular Pentium 3 was starting to get you know, a little long in the tooth, and the Pentium M was still a little bit of a ways off. So what did they do? Well, they put desktop Pentium 4s in laptops and called them desktop replacement machines, which is what this is. And one of the big issues with those is that they tend to cook themselves to oblivion because the cooling is way insufficient. And in the short time that I have used this, I have noted that it does not really run the cooling fan until the heatsink gets absolutely bloody hot. So, it tends to lead some credence into the idea that this thing really just did... A lot of these did not cool themselves very well, so they get a very bad reputation for that. But it's kind of neat to actually have one that works in your possession. Just another artifact of time, I suppose. Now, let's see if the battery actually works. Oh, it does. It does hold a charge. I did manage to get it to charge up. And it's booting into something. Windows XP. I may need to stop the video, depending upon what this does. Hopefully it's benign or password protected. Uh, it is running off of the battery, which is pretty cool. I didn't expect the battery to hold much of a charge at all. It's actually not, uh, not even too bad. Okay, well, it's got some user accounts on it. But uh, I did want to mention that it didn't have any RAM, so I had to put RAM in it, and I started with a one gigabyte memory module. I think it was PC2700. And it worked, but the machine behaved kind of weirdly. Um, and there were graphical glitches going on, so I'd imagine that the memory module didn't actually work, so I replaced it with two 512s, and I was able to get it to run reliably. So, the question of the day is, are either of these accounts actually password protected? I bet they're not, because, you know, security is something that it seems nobody cares about. Let's find out. I think I was right. Fortunately, it looks like there's nothing that's, you know, overly private, at least not yet. How much charge? 94%. That's actually really good. HP DeskJet 3600. So I bet it's going to pop up with like 4 million things that it wants to update here in a second. So let's see, MSN Messenger. This is not the factory install, is it? Is it the factory install? If it's the factory install, it's probably pretty messed up. I'd imagine this isn't the administrator account, if that's the case. Let's open up my computer to see what happens. Okay, well that opens, sort of. No, it looks like that doesn't really want to work. Okay. So, we do have some problems here. I have no idea what that is. I'm going to do a little bit of exploration on here, see if I can get it to do something useful, and uh, we'll see where we go. Oh look, antivirus software might not be installed. So yeah, there's probably at least five viruses on this. It does say it's a mobile Pentium 4. Oh, now everything's popping up. And I did see something pop up in the background that's kind of private, so I'm going to have to deal with that. Okay, it's running Service Pack 2, so at least it's somewhat up to date, I guess. Not really, but it's better than no Service Packs at all. It does, like I was saying, it does say Mobile Pentium 4. I thought that it was a regular desktop 478 Pentium 4, so I guess that's going to need some more uh, investigation. I will note again that the fan is not on. 
So, I'm not really sure why the fan's not on. It's a pretty generic system name. The mouse stopped moving for a second. Not 40 gigabyte hard drive. It's using the Intel video, thank God. Otherwise, that'd be a real problem. Atheros AR. 5001X Plus. I don't know what that actually is. If that's 802.11G, it probably is 802.11G, or if it's just 802.11B. And it does have an Intel Pro 100. It's very nice of them to put an Intel network card in something like this. Rather than high performance, which is not so high performance. Unfortunately, speaking of not so high performance, it's got Sound Min integrated audio. So, anyway. And of course the Intel 82801. I think that's only USB 1.1. So I didn't really I haven't really looked, but I'm gonna go ahead and I guess take a look further look at this, see if there's anything interesting left behind or what's going on with this. Okay, well it's mostly benign, but there's some stuff that's not benign. There's a chat message log there doesn't seem to have much in it. Nothing particularly interesting anyway. I'm not sure what these shockwave things are. Oh, they're installers. Okay. So I don't care about too much about that. There's an image that I won't get into because um, it's, it's not really that important. It's private, really. That's what we're going to try and get at here. There's a love letter. Fortunately, not the love letter worm, but a love letter right there. This, which I can't open because NetMeeting is not configured. Uh, sharing folders is empty, fortunately. Uh, received files just had this CS or XSL style sheet in it. So nothing else. And presumably a username for MSN. Cool. Uh, the pictures folder. Now I can't show too much of the pictures folder. Uh, there is this in it for some reason, but uh, there's a picture presumably of somebody's kid, and for whatever reason somebody replaced winter.bump with this. Okay, as my camera battery is about to die, this is a perfect lesson in why we erase the data off of our laptops when we get rid of them. Because the other user account was pretty benign, this one, as you might be able to tell, by the names of some of the things on the desktop, is uh, not. I'll put it that way. And there's all kinds of things. I checked out the Firefox uh, history, and there's even some porn in there. So that's really nice. Always nice to see. Like, what I'm talking about not being benign and all the data is just what I can see, because it's not connected to any network, and I wouldn't connect it to a network anyway, especially since it's got no antivirus. You know, there's probably at least 40 different pieces of malware on this thing. But, uh, there could be, since there's stuff in the bookmarks, there could be any number of saved passwords for online banking things, for games, for Facebook accounts. I probably haven't been used since 2009. But, uh, you know, any number of things. There's certainly at least one saved password for an MSN Messenger account on this machine. Not that that would work anymore. I think they got rid of that and replaced it with Skype, but, you know. And there's stuff like that, which I'm obviously not going to show. The interesting thing is the music. Uh, there's about, I think, 440, roughly. 438, probably close enough, songs in there. So that's pretty neat to have. Probably the only thing that's actually going to get kept on this, provided there's no malware in there. It'll certainly get scanned, but... Uh, you know, there could be any number of things in the temporary folder, especially since there were porn sites in the search history. Uh, why is it that whenever you find a used computer that's still got data on it, there's always porn on it somewhere? I, I, I don't get it. Anyway, but, you know, I don't, I don't know what's on here. There could be any number of things that could let me into any number of things, and, you know... There's like no free space, so what is actually on here? Click something. Well, that's probably not very helpful. This mouse is not the best mouse in the world. 
There's a downloads folder. Okay, now there's nothing, uh, other than network security. Oh god, okay, I can't show that on video. Somebody's network password. Cool, that's wonderful. Uh, DirectX. Well, there's nothing really else in there. It's an old version of Firefox, Firefox 3, back when Firefox was still good. You know, they've kind of devolved into a disaster now. You know, it's, it's, it's a lesson in always deleting your data before you get rid of an old computer. Now, I do want to, it's got nothing, I don't think anyway, it's got nothing to do with the person that gave me this machine because I don't see their name on anything in here, so... I'm pretty sure that it's got nothing to do with them. In fact, I'm pretty sure the reason why I have this is because they didn't have the power supply. So, there's a thing. But anyway, it's here. It runs. I think it's got one gig of RAM. Not just 512. Yeah, one gig. I'm going to have to see if that's actually a mobile Pentium 4 or not. I don't think it is. I think it's a desktop Pentium 4, but uh, I've got ways to figure that out. Okay, taking a look at CPU Z here. I know you're not supposed to plug USB sticks into computers just like that, but I don't care what's on that stick anyway, so that's a thing. This is probably even more confusing. Uh, mobile Intel Pentium 4 at 2.4 GHz with the Pentium 4 M logo but yet it's a socket 478 chip. It's not socket 479. It's very definitely not socket M or socket P, because uh, those are for the core series, but I was pretty sure that, uh, well, actually I think 479 is only for the Pentium M, um, not for this mobile Pentium 4. There's also the Pentium 4M, which apparently is different, and then there's the desktop Pentium 4, so I, I, I don't know. I'm going to call it a full-scale Pentium 4 because it has a heat spreader on it, like a full-scale Pentium 4. So, And the socket, at least as far as I could tell, looked like a regular 478 socket. So I'm sure that it's just a regular desktop CPU. So, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. I don't know what I'm going to put on it. There will almost certainly be a video about that. Or maybe there won't, because I've made so many videos about putting operating systems on computers. It's really kind of boring after a while. I might install something like Solid X. Oh, that might be something interesting to play with. And I guess we'll find out what I end up doing with this particular computer. But for now, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them down below. Remember to delete your data when you're getting rid of a computer. Oh look, now it's uh, it's got all these programs that it wants to shut off. End it now. I just want to reboot the computer, shut down the computer. What else is it going to open? Oh, I did determine before I leave that it is not the factory installation of Windows. So. Even though it's screwed like the factory installation of Windows would be.